School of the Wilderness. Welcome in the desert town of Alain. In the Bible, many characters were honed by the desert of wilderness experiences before they were ready for service. Somehow, God used these barren lands to prepare His children for things to come. I have no idea what God is preparing you for. But take note, God will use this time to further His kingdom and cause spiritual growth in your life. Let's look at one of these wilderness experiences. Moses was well trained in the wisdom of the world, a frequent visitor to the social pubs along the Nile, an experienced fighter who was trained by the best marines, well read and learned in some of the best libraries of the known world. He was compassionate and humble, yet had a terrible temper at times. He could read and write well, was up to date with the latest developments in science and technology, a man who was fit to be king, a leader, a well-qualified saint. But he had another secret weapon under his belt too. Unlike the other Egyptian princes in the palace, he knew God, and he knew who his real family was. Moses grew up in the best possible scenario in a comfy palace in Egypt. He had it all, and lost it all in one blow. He moved from lush palace gardens to a rugged wilderness. How did our hero bite the dust? Most wilderness experiences begin with sin. In Moses' case, it all started when his temper burned out of control and he killed an Egyptian in anger. Out of sympathy for a member of his family, he attacked the Egyptian and not only bruised him up well, but ripped the life out of him with his superior knowledge of fighting skills. In a moment of weakness, Moses changed from an important prince to a refugee, a fleeing outcast, a murderer that is hunted by Egypt's secret police. So Moses fled into the unknown wilderness, the place feared by most people of the civilized world, a place dotted by the bones of many unweary travelers. This was Moses' weakest moment, yet a triumph for God. God knew that this honored leader and pharaoh to be was not ready for leadership yet. There were a few more lessons he had to learn before God could use him. There were a couple of weaknesses in his outfit that needed some attention. A bigger plan was put into action that would change the course of history. Things were not out of God's control. God used this sinful experience of Moses to send him to the school of the wilderness, a place where he would be honed by the sandstorms, fried to a chip by the blazing sun in this waterless land. It would be his jail of loneliness and isolation, but it would also be a time and place where God would prepare his candidate for higher purposes. Our first reaction to any wilderness experience is withdrawal. We try to run away. We try to escape from this disaster like Moses. The causes of our own wilderness experience might be different from Moses's. It might have been caused by the pain of a loved one that died, the shock of losing your job, the disappointment when your best friend stabbed you in the back. Whatever the cause, this crisis usually announces a session in the school of the wilderness. God knows our desire to just get away, to flee away and escape, to withdraw into our own shell of depression. He knows that in our deepest need we have a need to belong somewhere, to be part of an understanding family, to be part of a group, to have a friend that believes in you, to have someone that understands. Oftentimes God sends some special messengers to us uh, to assist and support us in our wilderness experience. To Elijah, he sent crows to bring him food. To Jesus, he sent angels to assist him after 40 days of temptation. Whom did God send to you in your time of greatest need? To Moses, he sent an old Bedouin sheikh with the name of Yitru, who lived far away in northern Saudi, the land of Midian. Yitru welcomed Moses with typical Bedouin hospitality. Ahlan was, Ahlan, you are welcome, part of my family. Tea was served in small little cups and a fattened sheep was slaughtered for this ragtag refugee from Egypt. Hospitality was given an abundance to this weather-worn visitor, and just the best was good enough. 
the code of the desert ruled, no one can survive alone in the desert. We all need people. This is sometimes a rule that is learned under the most difficult circumstances. We need one another. The typical Middle Eastern hospitality, Yetru helped this visitor from Egypt to crawl from his shell of self-pity to a world of preparation. A world where God himself would equip him for a much bigger task, the return to Egypt. Who is God currently using in your life to support and uphold you? God might use someone in your life to announce a new chapter in your life, a new future as beyond comprehension, yet a future as in God's hands. But let's ask a deeper question. To whom is God sending you to be a Yitru, a home of hospitality and welcome? What stranger had God sent into your life so that he could bless him or her through you? Are you faithful in providing the best you have? Providing the things the stranger needs in his own uh, personal wilderness? Is your life open to this untimely intrusions into your program? This unwanted visitor who are sent by God to develop your character and personality? We read from Exodus chapter 20. Many years later the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Their cries for relief from their hard labor ascended to God. God listened to their groanings. God remembered his covenant with Abram, with Isaac and with Jacob. God saw what was going on with Israel. God understood. After 40 years in the desert, God suddenly called Moses. At last he was ready to graduate from the school of the wilderness. God took the initiative. He never forgot his candidate in the desert, even though we sometimes feel like he does. Sometimes we feel so isolated in our own wilderness, far away from everyone that was dear to us. In our loneliness we might feel that even God has forsaken us. It is as if He is not involved in our world of pain and trouble and misery. We pray and pray, but it did not seem that God is doing anything about it. Nothing seems to change. We start asking, where are you, God? God took the initiative and called from a burning bush. Moses, Moses, what a sight it must have been. God really had to use something spectacular to get Moses' attention. The tragedy of many wilderness experiences is not the pain we experience or the isolation, but rather our ability to miss the blessings of the burning bushes around us. Sometimes we are so consumed by our misery that we cannot hear God's voice speaking to us. He might use a letter from a good friend, the holiness of a young child's life, encouraging words from a book, the voice of a teacher, the beauty of a sunset. God can use all of these things to talk to you. Who or what is God using lately to get your attention? What God wanted to tell Moses was way bigger than he could ever imagine. God had bigger dreams for his candidate than Moses had himself. God saw a lot of potential in him. Moses was quite happy to forget about all that training in Egypt all the wisdom of the palaces, and just be a humble shepherd, walking day and night with his sheep in silence. But silently God prepared Moses for a task that was greater than anything Moses had ever dreamt of. The years in the wilderness was not wasted. The forty years behind the sheep was now not lost time to God. The many years behind the sheep was good preparation for a bigger flock that was to come. Moses was chosen by God to lead his people to the promised land through the same wilderness that Moses spent the last 40 years. Not only did he know where all the watering holes were, but also where to find shelter, shade and protection. He knew how to take care of sheep where there was no vet, and he knew what to do in times of danger. What he did not know yet was that he was going to spend another 40 years in the wilderness this time with a much more stubborn and bigger flock than he could imagine. Do you feel you have wasted so many years of your life before you heard God's voice? Oh, if only I met God years ago, my life would have been so different. All I have to offer him is ashes. Don't worry. God allowed all those wrong choices and difficult roads in your life to prepare you for something much bigger. 
You may think your life is now all sorted out under control, but oh boy, God might have something more up his sleeve. God's plans seem to be always a bit more exciting and bigger than what we can dream of. Why are you here in the Emirates? Do you believe that God can do something much more with your life? When God wanted the man to defeat the Midianites, he found Gideon, a man hiding away, fearful, the youngest of a family, unworthy in his own eyes to become anything in this world. When God wanted the beloved king, he picked David, a young shepherd, watching his dad's sheep day after day, not involved with politics or palace intrigues, yet a man after God's own heart. When God wanted someone to take the gospel to the whole world, he picked Paul, a terrible, angry person, who was the arch enemy of the Christians, persecutor and jailer and most unlikely person for the job. When God looked for someone to announce the coming of the Messiah, he picked John the Baptist, who ate a cocktail of honey-covered grasshoppers and were into rough leather fashions. Yet Jesus said of him that no one was greater than John the Baptist. When God wanted someone to bring his people from slavery into freedom, he picked Moses, a murderer, a refugee, hiding away in the desert. When God wanted something to be his witness in this world, he picked you. He knew that you would be his light that will shine in darkness, a worthy instrument in his eyes. You didn't choose me, remember? I chose you and put you into the world to bear fruit, fruit that won't spoil. As fruit bearers, whatever you ask the Father in relation to me, he gives you. Now about equipment for the task ahead. If God calls you, he will also equip you. God did not equip Moses with a megaphone, a whistle, and a score of trucks and buses for his new assignment. He used something that was quite common to him, his staff. What's in your hand, Moses? When God looks for something to use in his service, he usually picks something quite common and unworthy. For many years, this stick was a constant companion to Moses, an extension of his hand in times of trouble, in times of blessing. This well-used staff could possibly not be used for anything else than walking, watching sheep and poking stragglers? Or could it? God used this trusted wooden friend, this sweat-stained stick that bore blisters into his hand, for something more unusual. We all knew how the stick changed into a snake and how it became Moses' friend again. I wonder if he ever trusted that stick again. God gave him a variety of signs and wonders to convince him of his readiness for the next assignment. The snake played quite a role in the Egyptian temple cult. In Moses' hand it was a sign that the snake of Egypt will become like a staff in his hand. All he needed to do was to be obedient. If only he would be obedient, the Pharaoh and his empire would become like a common stick in his hand, easy to lift and maneuver. It would be a sign of his spiritual authority. With this stick he would part the Red Sea, strike water out of a rock and defeat the Amalekites. Yet in every stick there is also a snake. If this authority from God is to be abused, it will bite back. The other side of the coin is that this same stick can become a terror to the one holding it. Once when Moses abused his authority in anger and hit the rock instead of speaking to it, God did not punish him on the spot, but he lost his entry into the promised land. Be careful with the spiritual authority that God has given you, saints. May you be found obedient to your calling at all times. God gave Moses a second sign, leprosy. When he put his hand into his robe, he will be leprous, an outcast, terminally ill, a sign of being unfit for service, a symbol of sin and impurity. Yet when he put his hand in again, he was healed. Uh, God wanted to tell Moses that he would never have to hang his head in shame about sins of the past. Just as easy as God can heal leprosy or turn a stick into a snake, just as easy he can take away the sins and mistakes of the past and forgive him for anything he ever did. Look up, Moses, the past is finished. Lift up your head to the future. Stop hiding and start living. When God calls someone, he also equips him for the task. You are God's chosen instrument. God could have picked many others, but he picked you. 
Be on the lookout for where God would like to use you. He prepared you. He equipped you. And He will accomplish His purposes through you. Be available to Him. And you will have a powerful experience with Him at your side. Amen. Stay